Not bad. Haven't used this tea set in a while. Oh, I just thought the white on white was a good look. Well, hello, welcome. This is gonna be the beginning of a new series for me of showing my working process and my behind the scenes studio environment that goes on in creating my artwork. Not really a film person. A lot of my camera gear and things that I've recently purchased uh, to make these are still very foreign and new to me. So give me some patience, but I'm hoping to get used to this new kind of, what seems almost as oversharing uh, lifestyle that uh, seems to be going on these days. Um, but hey, it's, it's a pandemic and we're all social distancing and real life in so many different ways. So it feels like all that social energy that used to go into going to art shows and museums and parties, um, some of it can go into here onto uh, streaming and online channels. So here's, here's my attempt at the same. Well, as you can see, this is my flower window, and it is doing okay at the moment. It's a little bit, I would say, underground. I know to a lot of people, it probably looks overgrown. You're not used to seeing geraniums this long, but this is this is uh, this is kind of how I like to garden. I mostly just give them tea. They get the, the cold dregs of whatever I'm not drinking here. And one time, this was about three times as bushy, but I had to do some pruning because they went through a dry spell, by which I mean I wasn't watering them enough. And there was so much old brown leaves everywhere that I hadn't bothered to clean up, um, whether because I wasn't here or because I was just being forgetful. Um, they couldn't get enough light, and so it was choking them. But I've gone around trimming again, and, and hopefully they'll be back on schedule. But I wanted to talk about these because these seem like a good, kind of a good stand-in for the artist's brain, if you will. Um, this is sort of your creative garden here, where all your ideas can come to fruition. And if you don't water it enough, or you get it overgrown and you don't prune and cut some of the stems, you can see what happens. And so I kind of like to look to this little window as a good, uh, I guess you could see a good, uh, well, just, just uh, kind of a symbolic representation of where my head is at, maybe. Um, so yeah, just like, I give them a little bit of water every day and and hopefully I get some beautiful flowers and leaf foliage. Um, so likewise, whether you're an artist, a uh, full-time artist, which is debatable, I don't know how many of us are full full-time artists these days, um, or you do art for fun sometimes, um, I think most of us are probably in the middle somewhere on that one, but I thought maybe I could address a topic that seems to be very much in demand, especially lately. There seems to be so many people who want to learn, not just technique, but they want to learn the psychology and the motivation behind the artistic process. And I have to admit, I was one of these people who used to scoff at that, I used to think Oh, you know, it's just technique. You just get it done, work hard, right? Um, so I should probably backtrack and say I definitely am one of those people who went to a full-time art school. And I, it was, it, was a, it was a very rigorous place, but, well, I'm not sure how much, uh, 
thought about the creative process at the time. I was mostly just trying to get good at drawing and painting. Mm. But, well, that was about 12 years ago or so, but fast forward to now, um, I've been having a lot of extra time on my hands. Um, I used to travel a lot for art shows and teaching workshops and going to museums all around the world. And uh, now I've had a lot of time to just kind of work on some projects at home um, that I've always wanted to do. Um, I still teach, it's, it's gone online, which is one of the reasons I have this video set up. But yeah, I stretched some really big canvases. I made some way too big for my studio, so we'll see how that goes. They're, they're coming along well and I hope to share them with you soon. Um, I've also maintained my usual practices of painting portraits and working on drawings and uh, smaller scale paintings. Um, so, in a way not much has changed and in a way everything has changed. But I want to talk about some of the positive changes that have come about from this six month semi-quarantine lockdown that we've had here in uh, Washington DC. Um, and for my first video I thought I'd kick off one of my new practices. So I decided to show you, of all things, ink drawing, which I'm not really that well known for. I'm mostly known for large scale oil paintings. Um, and so ink drawing is something that's a little new for me. I use small notebooks. This is the smallest one I have. It's a uh, faux leather bound art thick kind of paper. Um, I do drawings in these. Um, the reason you don't see many drawings in here is because I sell them. And so every time I finish one, I post it on social media. It usually sells overnight. I take an X-Acto blade and I cut it out and ship it off. So uh, I end up with a lot of empty sketchbooks. Um, and then I also end up with a lot of empty thin sketchbooks with the papers all gone in the middle. So I have a couple of these. Um, some of them are a little larger. Um, the size this gives my head, I think it's 22 by 18, perhaps. Um, yeah, but these have been really fun. I started out with ballpoint pens, of all things. Um, the kind of things you'd, you know, write a not very fancy note with. Just a type of, you know, I found this in a hotel room type of pen. Um, did a couple drawings with those. I used some watercolors as well. Um, and I took a little bit of a break because I'd drawn and sold and shipped so many and then I taught a lot of students um, in some of my online classes and so I thought um, I'll cycle and I'll go back to oil painting so then I stretched some really huge canvases and I don't know about a month later or so I thought it's time to get back into ink and that happened to coincide with a change in the weather um, Washington built on a swamp can get Swampy, and so it's not exactly a place I go dressed like this in the summer. But with fall weather, I was able to get out again, and I quite enjoyed it. Um, and so ink was my best friend because you can carry a light sketchbook, a pen, maybe a couple interchangeable nibs, and a bottle of your favorite ink, and you are set to go. So I decided to combine my love of outdoor exploration with a little bit of ink drawing so I could feel productive, I suppose. Um, and I really just uh, let myself go around wild in the woods. Um, one of the things that I've really missed over these last six few months, or is it seven now? I have missed going to the museums. I was a huge museum goer. I went about once a week on average. And this could include anywhere within the US, Europe, Mexico, you know, depending where I was. Um, I sometimes spent every day of the week at a museum when I was traveling. Uh, and then there were times when I was taking it easy and I might've just gone maybe once a month, but those were rare. And so that's a big part of my uh, 
daily life that's gone. Um, museums were more to me than just looking at an exhibition. I, of course, love traveling exhibitions. Um, I loved it when my heroes came into town, but for me, the permanent collections were my favorite because they were pieces that I could go visit again and again, and they'd always be there, though they might be moved around in new configurations every few years by the curators of the museum. Yeah, and I, I just love walking on autopilot through those rooms. Um, sometimes I'd bring a book, or sometimes I'd pull out my phone and I'd read articles on the internet, and it was kind of like a day off for me. Um, I'd let my feet go on autopilot and sit wherever I wanted to and drink tea wherever I wanted to and talk to whoever I wanted to and um, it was a, a very, very holistic experience for me. Um, maybe a bit like going to church, having a family reunion and experiencing some kind of transcendental right at the same time. It was it was very powerful. Um, so so I did get the chance to go to the National Gallery recently, but most of it was closed down um, with the restrictions and the darkness hanging over everything. I just, it just was gloomy to me. It wasn't the experience that I looked for in museums. And so I realized that museums were a little more to me than just looking at art. Um, so I said, I have to find a way to get this back. And so, that's how I ended up uh, spending more time in the woods. Um, there's another place you can go, and the uh, trees became my paintings. Um, you could walk down a path and, and see each individual tree and treat it like a work of art and watch how it would change throughout the seasons. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, there was something about museums that just the, the high level of culture that was given and curated for you. Um, I, I feel like I have to be more self-reliant and curate my own art experiences now. Um, so I'm hoping to show you all how I do that and how you can do that and have a great time. Um, I think books, poetry, fiction, non-fiction, uh, these things are definitely the fuel of my frequent visits outdoors. Um, I try to get myself in some kind of mood, um, much the way one would see a painting and then be, be caught in a mood after seeing a Turner seascape, for example, um, which is a very different mood than a Caravaggio Tenebris painting, on the other hand. Um, yeah, I try to uh, read deeply and widely, and, and music too. I try to find various kinds of music that I can find somewhere between those three things, the woods, the music, and the text. I try to find my own path and story and, and hopefully create more of my own. And so this is, this is one of the pillars of my practice. Um, the other one, which hasn't changed much, is just my sense of how I like to dress and how I like to see the world. And so, I like to go out in bows and frills if, as if every day were a party. And I try to, I try to see it that way. And uh, yeah, going out with friends like that meeting, talking about books and art and life. This is another pillar of my working practice. And then, of course, the third one, most important, is getting in the studio and making it happen. And so I will be offering more online classes, both live and in the future, some that will be downloaded or downloadable. Um, and, and I hope to uh, cover many aspects of art making, everything from the technical part, uh, how I make paint, how I paint, I suppose why I paint, um, and then I'll also be talking about ink drawing and charcoal drawing, maybe frame making, uh, though, though there's so much to share. So I'm hoping to take it in bite-sized chunks 
uh, one video at a time and I think it's going to be a really fun adventure so I hope you can come along that with me and uh, I hope we can make more great art no matter what's going on out there we can enjoy and make great art with each other yeah so thanks for watching and I'm gonna go get some painting done now <laughs>